Thanks, everybody. First on the agenda, um, citizen statement and petition. Do we have any uh, anybody's statements or petitions? Any hands up on the screen? All right. Let's go to uh, correspondence to the board. Nitmuck Youth Softball Parade, April 22nd, 2023 at, at 10 a.m. Is there anybody from from the organization? Is this Chris Corbett there here or on the remotely? Well, there's an email you have in your packet. Um, it's an email from Chris Corbett about opening day parade for baseball and softball 2023. Hi, Laura. Below are the details. We expect to begin the parade at 10 a.m. and be done with the procession and on the field um, for the opening day ceremonies by 1030. Thank you. Do I uh, have a motion to uh, approve the parade permit? I move to approve a parade permit for the Nipmuc Youth Softball Parade on Saturday, April 22nd, 10 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. from Noble Road to Memorial Park, Hazawa Little League Fields. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Number five, consider junk dealer license. 50 Cape Road. Message from Bob White, who may concern Hello Town Clerk. Is is it that time of year again? Junk license. He's asking for it. Do uh, I have a motion? Move to approve a 2023 junk dealer for license at 50 Cape Road, Mr. Bob White, pending the receipt of positive routing slips. Second. Any discussion? What is what is the the fee, Laura? Do you know? Is it still twenty five dollars? I believe so. Uh, um, Ellen gives them the license and charges. I think it's twenty five dollars for it. Okay. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Thank you. Um, next is the discussion of the uh, horizon easement for town hall. To um, and there is there's town council. You can. Commuted. Whoops. Right. Good evening. Good evening. So apparently Horizon is looking for an easement to reconnect or run um, wires that we use for uh, really it's for public access. Um, I think audio and video is always explained to me. Is that right? So everything that's coming in the building from Verizon right now um, is coming off was coming of the pole in the street and we run, rerun the conduit downstairs to their equipment and we're getting all the wires off that side of the building so everything's going to come in via the, the poles on the side and now it'll be underground from that pole to the building rather than overhead mm -hmm. so the conduit in the ground just needs an easement okay and we don't we don't use them for internet or anything else. Is that right? No, right now it's just for the audio video. We could use them for a secondary internet if we needed to. And they would put that in. The easement would include all of that. So we Correct. would have to do another easement. Correct. This would be one and done. Yes, that, that right? would be the Verizon pipe. Yeah. Okay. For instance, like Comcast has one as well. Okay. Karis, thanks for attending. Can you um, just kind of walk us through this language and what your what your recommendations are? Sure. So um, let me just pull up the easement document here one second. But uh, the easement is a perpetual easement um, for the AV use on a 10 foot wide strip on the parcel as, as described. Um, they also would get the ability to, um, to move or relocate the easement based on the language um, in the easement that they have, have uh, proposed. Um, so it's, you know, it's a fairly straightforward easement, although there are a couple of things that I would would want included in the easement document, like the um, the requirement to restore the property um, after they, you know, install their lines um, or any time they, they want to go in there. And they do say they'll properly backfill and restore in reasonably good condition. Um, uh, and then there needs to be a reference to a town meeting vote. So, um, any easements are required to be uh, authorized by town meeting. Uh, the select board can't do it on their own, um, which is why I've added a 
language uh, authorizing this easement into the draft warrant. Um, but uh, I would want to add that reference uh, into uh, this easement document. Not a big deal. Um, otherwise, it's it's really pretty straightforward. It, it is what it says it is. Um, and happy to answer any more specific questions. So if I'm understanding it, what it comes down to is there's really no action for us to take tonight. There is uh, language that needs to be worked out between between you and Verizon. It would have to be voted on at the uh, at the ATM and uh, next month. And then that's right. Now, all all that needs is approval for this easement as described in the easement, um, and then the specific language, um, if approved by town meeting, uh, I can work on with Verizon uh, after town meeting. Um, so yes, there is no action for you to take tonight with respect to this particular easement. You don't have the authority to grant it at this point. Now, but how about how we, about the warrant? Right. Um, don't we have to open the warrant to yes. put an article on there? Yes. So uh, you will need to open the warrant. You can open the warrant, um, add the article, and then close the warrant. Um, and that that would need to be done tonight. Okay. So we can what we can do that right now. What to open the ATM warrant? Second. Okay. All right. So um, I know we're going to review the warrant, but Laura, did you did you add on here? Wait, wait, at least the, the I know the order may change, but it's on the bottom. It's right now, it's at the bottom, right? Yeah, yeah. correct. So this is Article. So basically it, it reads right now to see if the town will vote to authorize select board to grant Verizon wireless an easement in perpetuity to lay, construct, reconstruct, operate, maintain, replace, remove lines for the transmission of intelligence and telecommunication upon over, under, and across land shown on town of minute assesses map 11, lot 174, lot 18, and lot 20, uh, or act or do anything in, in relation there too. And Lonnie, the way this is worded, this wouldn't stop us from using it as a secondary or primary internet in the future, right? Yeah. Because it says on here, um, lines for transmission of intelligent telecommunications, right? Yeah, it's all right. It's all the same. Yeah, yep. so it's all the same. Okay, so basically, we just, we're just uh, approving to add Article 39 on here, which was not there before. Yeah, but well, we do have a, we have to just vote to open the warrant. It was moved in second. Okay. So all those in favor to open the warrant? All right. So do we need a motion to add this on there? I move to add Article 39 for the Verizon easement. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. The only question I just have, just the way it's written, it says Verizon Wireless. I I don't know if they if they go by Verizon Wireless now or just still Verizon. I'm sure that yeah, it's, stuff it says well, it says and or do anything in relation there too. Which right? is the company name? I just don't know. I don't know if they're separate. Right, like in the letter, it looks like Verizon. Yeah, Verizon's Verizon, and Verizon Wireless is an is a separate entity right. of Verizon. Right. I just I, again, I don't know that. It I know I can I know I can log into one login now for both, but they're definitely two separate bills. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Right. Actually, a, a great point because the um, the easement came. Yeah, the easement language actually says Verizon Wire Verizon New England Inc. So when I do my final review of the warrant, I will update that um, to say Verizon New England Inc. Thank you. And the language we have right now, and or do anything in relation there too, is sufficient to allow you to alter the language of this article as long as it pertains to this issue. Is that right? Yeah. I, and and I'll do a, a final review anyway of, you know, for little picky type things, Scrivener's errors, I would call them. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to hold off asking for a vote to close the warrant yet because we're going to be discussing discussing it later on in the uh, sure. later on. So just don't let me forget we have to close it now that we've opened it. Right. All right. Uh, does FinCon want to step up and open open your meeting? Yeah, I put it up. Six, seven. Oh, oh, six, seven. Yeah.
That's our room. There's a room. Nick. Ron, Nick. Yeah. Hey, everybody. That's enough, right? Yep, we got it. four voting members and one non voting member. So okay. <laughs> All right. So we'll open FinCon meeting at 6 40 p.m. on April 5th. All right. Kim, do you you want to walk us through the budget? Sure. There's no changes to the budget from the last meeting. It was balanced at the end of the last meeting. And so tonight's vote is simply to answer any remaining questions you might have and then to vote on the actual number that's proposed. That number is highlighted on the spreadsheet. It is. 23,370,900. Okay, I, I do have one question. Um, this is mm -hmm. this hasn't really changed anything yet, but uh, if you remember uh, the last meeting I was at, which was, I guess, a month ago now, because I missed the last one, we were talking about the trash bills and talking about the new trash contract. And in, in subsequent discussions with the Board of Health, um, there was a discussion potentially of uh possibly changing the way that we do trash and rather than be, because of the increase um rather than sending everybody a separate bill twice a year um we may actually the, the board of health is considering asking people to or considering having us um build the cost of trash right into the tax bill and then offering it to everybody it's all going to be single stream so everybody and the question is whether whether it's cost effective to offer it roll it out to everybody in town um, or not. And you know that's not an issue for, for us so much right now. But the question is um, that would probably affect uh, the way the budget is uh, laid out at town meeting. So the discussion I had with them is if uh, you know we could approve it the way it is right now, and if there were any changes, then we would have to change it on the floor at the town meeting. I'd want to know if the overall cost to the taxpayer goes up in general because there are people who are not on that trash bill. So right. now we're adding customers. Right. So if the overall average changes, I'd want to know that. I'd also want to know if there's an opportunity to opt out and have your tax bill go down. People may be happy with their non service that they have now. Um, so I'd like to understand those options. So right now, if the option, if you couldn't opt out, it would essentially drive the cost down a, a, a hair based on the, the small percentage of users that are not versus he, I don't. I actually, don't. He, he, he said it's fairly significant for a couple of reasons. Um, it's actually about 20% of the town. Yeah. So he said there's about 400 households that aren't. So what it would mean is those 400 households would get billed in their tax bill um, and they would get picked up for free. I mean, and if they wanted to um, still pay for their own, it would be on top of that. So I, I don't think there would be an option to opt out. I don't think, I, I don't know. But the discussion about the cost effectiveness and economies of scale um, is something I'm discussing with him and they're crunching the numbers right now. So yeah, and they don't get picked up for free. They get picked up for what they paid for in the addition in their tax bill. Right, right. right. So, so, right. But, so is there a way of looking at increasing the, the number of people using the town service and thereby decreasing you know, getting those economic this or just well right? what he's what the the big issue that he brought up to me was that um based on the fact that there's one truck that can do it all and the cost of trucking is is everything is those 400 homes that aren't being picked up right now we're actually being driven by so there's potent there's a potential that they could still do those 400 homes spread out over the five days of pickup uh, without an additional cost for the truck. Right. So when we talked to the, the board, we talked about, well, if people worried about people doing their private service and thereby increasing the cost by having less people use it, where yes. we then said, well, look at it the other way. Is there a way you can drive increased usage of it, thereby driving down the cost? And so is this what they're trying to do with this? Well, I think it's I think that this started as an exercise in there and they're looking into it. There's been no decision been made, and I'm just bringing it to the board that they're they're crunching the numbers to 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 see if it would make sense. I wanted to actually see if there was a way 
to put a ballot question on the ballot to let everybody weigh in on it, but that's not an option right now. So I'm bringing this up purely um, to make just to talk about this budget and what the mechanism would be to change it. And if if we needed to, if they wanted to implement that, and it was decided somehow that it it was going to happen. And the answer to that is it would have to happen at the town meeting on the floor as an amendment. Um, but how would that be implemented though? Like what's the mechanism for implementing that change? Instead of, well, instead of, um, instead of sending people two separate tax bills, or two separate well, I think trash you, you, bills. But you're, 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 you've got 20% of the population doing their own thing and they're happy with it. And we're suggesting we're going to incorporate into the tax bill for 100% of the people. So mm -hmm. that seems like that change is significant to 20% of the town. Well, the, the change, when it changed from, it used to be built into the tax bill. Okay. And then it could separate it out, was the Board of Health just did it. So, but I, I think that yeah. we need to look back at the history of why we did that too. Right. Like, I don't want to lose sight of. It was at the. Because this has come up multiple times. This right. isn't the first time. It, right. It, it is looked at every, it, for instance, well, every year when we set the tax rate, we always say, do we do a dual tax rate or do we do a single tax yeah. rate, right? I'm pretty sure every time that they're, I feel like this circles back every time that the contract is coming up, right? Um, again, I, I guess you would have to see what the numbers would be to the saving. I, I mean, I, I, from a personal note, I don't use it, so I don't, I don't want to weigh in too much. I, I, I don't know that I would still use it, except maybe now and then ah, throw a barrel out there just cause, out of convenience. But um, yeah, I, I, again, it's been a service I haven't used in so long, so I, I, I like the fact that I can opt in or out of that service. Right. Yeah. The conver the conversation, conversation um, that I had with the Board of Health is exactly what. FinCom chair brought up was it, it's it's all about about cost mm -hmm. and and it's coming up right now because there is a change in the contract. It is a fairly if we if they don't do something different, then the cost to everybody is going to go up um, because the contract it's a five year contract. Apparently, it's a three year contract with a with an option to opt for an That's additional two years. The costs of everything have gone up. Um, and it, you know the, the 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 conversation was that right now we send people bills twice a year. We pay about four thousand dollars a year to to a company to send those bills out. Then they have to be collected and handled separately. This way, it would be put into the tax bill. Um, it it if it's in the tax bill, it would be deductible as much as a real estate tax is. Whereas uh, for a lot of people, the trash bill is not deductible. Um, so th there's all kinds of pros and cons. And again, I I don't really. I don't really want to discuss it any further now because the, the really we're all bringing up the same issues that I brought up to them. Um, the, 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 the mechanism of billing is a different question than making me, uh, it compulsory. something compulsory, right? right? Those are two different questions in my mind. Yeah, and I don't with a tax bill billing method because that's an efficiency. Right. But I, the short answer is I don't know. My understanding is that it is the Board of Health that would make that decision, uh, but it would be much better to get get to find a way to get the taxpayers to weigh in on it yeah, yeah. to yep. see what they think, which is why I talked about the non-binding question on the ballot, but that's not an option. So I'm just bringing it up that um, whatever we do with the, with the, you know, with the budget right now, um, that's something potentially that, that we discussed after the last meeting when uh, we found out it's going to be single stream recycling every week and everybody's going to get the two trash cans and, you know, so there's there's a, a few changes, and also it might it might make it a little bit um, less of a burden on on uh, on the elderly, too. I think the board of health could find a creative way to take the temperature of the town of their right. desires. So, right. Uh, personally, I would love one less reason that I've got to write a check. You know, I'm almost there where I don't actually need a checkbook. This is one more one more way to get there. So. You can pay online. <laughs> yeah, but they right. charge you uh, I mean, small fee. Yeah, <laughs> so. <clears throat> All right. So, are there any questions? Any other questions about the budget, or are we ready to take a? Yeah, I would little... like to speak about trash. I've had my hand raised. Oh, sure. So, Sorry, Kim. I didn't. I, I, okay. I see it in the corner now, but I'm. I apologize. Okay. So, just from an organizational and process standpoint. 
how are we, what does it mean that they're crunching the numbers right now, 30 days out from town meeting? And I say this because it's, it's, I'm not opposed to the idea, but how can we possibly be talking about something or even having them do a financial analysis without including either my office or the finance office as part of that discussion? I think, you know, it's oh. great to consider ideas, but I think before we bring anything to town meeting, we have a responsibility to actually provide data for taxpayers to make decisions off of. And I think it gets dangerous, I mean, to just, I mean, to not include primary parts of the town in something as substantial as this when you're considering well, a change. I, I can answer I can answer that question because after the last meeting, I brought it up to them asking that, just asking the question, why do we still do it like this? Especially when um, it's going to be single stream and, you know, there's 20% that aren't included and in what are the costs? And I, at first, I think they didn't really even think of it. And it, it, it may not make sense, but I talked to them a week ago about it and what they're trying to, the, the, the big question that they're waiting for now that, that, you know, their office is doing is about the trucking. Because a big question is, if the truck that they they use one truck five days a week, that's what they do. And they said, if if the additional trash um, would, that was going to be generated would require them to have a second truck, um, then it would completely change the contract and it really it may not save money. So it might not make sense. So it may not even happen at all. So the short answer is, I guess I'm taking the blame for even bringing up and asking it. Uh, because they weren't even thinking about it. And I realized that, that you know, that, and the reason for the for it to be exigent right now is that um, the contract, you know, is up, you know, at the end of June. And right. since we passed the budget now, it would we if, if we don't do it now, we pretty much can't. So well, that, that's not 100 percent true. I mean, they could adjust it for the I mean, if we did our due diligence and would pass annual town meeting, then you could adjust the budget. In another town meeting, but you could also yeah. wait till the next annual. And you can also it, amend the budget. Yeah. Right. Well, all right. So the short answer is, the short answer is, again, they haven't said. I'm just bringing it up here to let everybody know that they're looking into it. Nobody has made any kind of decision okay. to do anything. Pro, pro so is this a proposal yeah. that they're going to bring to the select board to consider before town meeting? Is this something that? we both finance and myself should reach out to the board of health to help them calculate their numbers on because there are variables that i didn't hear mentioned including potentially additional staffing costs there are the town has costs that have to be considered in whatever model that they move forward with and we want to make sure i just want to make sure that the data is correct when we do okay. make it to a meeting for a vote and we can't do that if we're not included in the discussion yeah well the answer is that um this has just been a discussion between me and the chair of the of the Board of Health, and they're going to talk about it at the meeting next week. Um, they didn't. Th their thought was it would it would alleviate the bill part, um, and also that th it really wouldn't take any more staffing on the town because it would be the contract that would take so, care of it. Just a suggestion. I mean, I think the idea is good. I'd even want to understand why it has to be universally included in all tax bills and why can't it be, you know, targeted to those people that are, have opted in. Added to those tax bills individually. Secondly, any financials presented to this board, I would like to Kim and team to have reviewed them and be speaking to them while we're in session. So I think to Kim's point, I think that's just due diligence. I, I would want all that to go through, you know, FinCom, Kim, finance team yeah. before we I, sit down. And, and I'm not arguing with any of that. I guess all I'm saying is that this was an informal conversation that I've had in the last week or so. So you're just giving us a heads up and here we are going, taking deep dives. Well, I, I think it's, but I think it's great yeah. that that's what this is supposed to be about, right? Yep. And I'm, and obviously I'm sure everybody is gonna be talking now about, oh, we're we gonna change the trash, what are we gonna, and and again, this is this is my fault for bringing it up there, but I would rather get it out there and have people discuss it. Um, so there's been, there's been no decisions made about anything. It's just, they're just doing a, a financial exercise to see, you know, what the impacts would be, and and we're talking about it. So I'm just bringing it and putting it out there that we're discussing it. Fully support the fact finding mission. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if the schedule doesn't allow us to uh, get it in in time, say la vie. <laughs> uh, there's another hand. Oh, Nick has a hand raised. 
Hey, uh, Mike, um, just curious if there was no change, not meaning not added to the tax bill, what would be the impact on the um, typical homeowner? I don't, I don't think we know that yet. Yeah, that's what they need to go. That's what they're finding out now. I, I, okay. Yeah, you know what? I'm not going to. I have a number in my head, but I'm not going to say it because I thought we discussed it last month, but I'm not going to say it because I don't want to. Okay. I don't want to give wrong information. I just want to add the one other piece of this, which I know complicates it, but if we are going to be considering that as an option, we should be considering all options and other models that exist out there that might be beneficial to the community so that we're giving everybody all the information to make a decision off of, not just some of it. And so, you know, we don't know which thing would actually be the most beneficial to the community because we've never run any of the scenarios, whether it's outsourcing it entirely, privatizing it, or bringing it in house. It hasn't been done. And so that it's essential so that we could actually do a ballot vote or even a survey or anything. I, I mean, talking about, about it conceptually only just creates frustration i think because we don't have data to back it up either way and so i mean i i encourage well, the idea I, I think, of looking at uh, well, it i just think we need to do some work first before we start starting a dialogue well this is what well i, I think the first step is to start a dialogue which is what i'm doing right now fact finding i agree fact finding mission this gets the ball rolling and right. rolls us into identifying other ways to do it think right that, Right. I think the worst thing is to say, I think the worst thing is to say, well, we've just always done it that way. So we need to keep doing it that way. Yeah. I mean, why not look at it? That's and that's all I'm saying is let's let's take a look at it. And, you know, I completely agree with Kim's hesitation and the fact that the schedule is pretty much telling us that we're probably not going to have everything we need in order to hit this contract. But it'd be great to know going into the next contract. So. All right. We get on trash. I had two things on the budget. Yes. Uh, one, Alan was going to investigate the uh, status of the contract for the salt purchase, as well as the, I believe, the state of the guaranteed payment to the plow drivers to see if there was any other reductions that could be uh, taken advantage of. So I'll speak to that. So that conversation actually doesn't have a direct impact on this FY24 budget because of the way that snow and ice is actually budgeted for we use the previous year's averages in order to create the number for 24 so that number is whatever it is 194 so it, it hasn't impacted it um outside of that yes um that is is supposed to be in the works um that unfortunately you may know our highway surveyor is on leave and so we are actually going to be addressing some of the administrative issues later tonight in this meeting okay so just real quick, but to that point, I think we added old uh, business to the agenda as a standing topic. Mm -hmm. I think those are the type of things, those follow up mm -hmm. items we probably want to list. Yeah. And if we get when so we at least touch on them every meeting, we don't lose track of them. Yeah. So if we can add those, Laura, you know, mm -hmm. as some old to old business, that'd be good. Um, so it does roll into the FY24 piece. Um, I made the comment when Alan was giving his uh, talk on it about the trailing five not really mm -hmm. being representative of what we should have in the budget at least it feels like we're going to be low for the next few years if we don't adjust how we account for that average um i don't know what the number would be i don't know how to magically come up with that but it feels like we've hit mm -hmm. an exponential spike of which when we look backwards and do the trailing five average we're going to be low so i just don't want to be here again where there's a you know so right so so <laughs> here's the tricky part it's impossible to really know based upon the conversation and the data that we had um, with some with some concerns of their contract last year and who I'm, I'm not even sure what their guaranteed payouts would be or even if they were accurate or should have been in the past. Right. That's part of the issue. Getting a real number is an issue from the past. What we do know is that snow and ice is one of the only areas in which we are allowed to deficit spend for this exact reason right to be able to create this sort of room because weather is variable so the way in which we try to combat that um is by using you know 70 75 percent of the prior five-year average we certainly could budget more but that you know in order to potentially offset what might be higher but we don't know for sure 
be even based upon the data that we have, which is pretty similar to what I've said about the tree warden budget in the past and the highway budgets before, because we haven't closely analyzed those budgets. Um, I wouldn't feel comfortable saying for sure that we were too low last year or too high this year. It's too, you know, what the what the consistency was with the contracts we gave or the rates that we paid. I mean, all of that is variable because they were managed by a, an elected position, right? That will change going forward. Okay. Mike, I have a point. The only question I have, and it's actually, I was thinking about we want to Kim, you can answer this question, Kim. How does, if we get out of the contract and don't fulfill our commitment, which is actually could artificially spike this year's budget, right? We don't mm -hmm. want to bring our budget up because we don't want to have to maintain, we can't reduce the budget once it's up there, right? So we're going to try to get out of the contract, not commit to the full tonnage we the contract says we owed. I think we were trying right. to get out of the contract to reduce the amount of deficit spending in general, which right, does but have also, the impact. But then we can the, also, yeah. right. So, um, so that does have a potential budget impact. So I'm not, we probably need to close on that sooner than later, right? Right. So, but that type of offset, like every other year with snow and ice, is handled usually through year end transfers, right? So we'll be looking at that in a meeting, you know, right after town meeting. Okay. So that would be June. So, what, what I would say is, with last meeting, we were focusing more on the tonnage related to the salt as being the primary concern. I would actually say, of issue related to that contract in general is the guaranteed payouts of $55,000 to drivers that didn't actually drive. Five so thousand. to me, I think cool. there is a legal issue there related to payments for work that wasn't done. Yeah. And so I have counsel looking into that. Agreed, the separate issue. I Anybody want, listening? Yeah. That's 5,000 per driver, not right. 55,000 per driver. Right, but I, it I is also $35,000 higher than the budget. That so, so Kim, Kim, just you can set my mind at ease if you tell me that the current uh, contract around buying the salt, just the salt, not the driver stuff, mm -hmm. did not in any way impact your forecast for FY24. It hasn't. I, my forecast for 24 at this point is primarily based on our traditional model. Um, if we, this is my okay. approach right now, which is if we figure out in the next month, which is actually really right now, since it should not snow again, where we are deficit spending wise with that account, oh, we can either yeah. handle it through year end transfers or we could address this budget if we think there's going to be a shortfall when we certify free cash in November. If at that point we're very nervous because we feel like we're way off target, that's a that's an area where we can fix and maybe like supplement somewhere. That would be my approach. But Kim, it's usually that that budget item is. 75% of the five year average, is that right? Yeah, previous five years. Yeah, previous five years. Oh, five year actuals, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. So that's right. to make sure the we're average. not fulfilling the contract right. to keep our FY23 low. That's my objective here. Is that correct? Right. All right. Yep. So right. we don't know if we got out of the contract. The actual yet, is not right. Which is really the question and the action item that we need to get an answer on, right? Mm -hmm. But that can wait, yeah. I think. I think we need to right. we need to continue uh, sharpening the pencil on the entire situation. I think some of the suggestions about the PO process and how this is going to be handled moving forward will clear this up and take care of it. I'm not totally concerned. It's not an amount of money that I believe is going to move the needle in some way about the entire total budget. I just want to make sure that we we're all on the same page. So the we get on salt and ice. Mm -hmm. The uh, the other one was uh, with Chief Kessler's retirement. I'm still unclear of the state of what head employees we will have for the fire department as we as Chief Kessler retires, uh, and how that related back to because that that was impactful to that was impactful to the budget, and I'm still confused on what leadership we're going to have at the fire department in that transition time period. OK, so. so the current proposed model, let's assume he was not going to retire, right? Yeah. Was to have Chief Kessler remain on shared between the two communities and for each community to hire a full time deputy. Blackstone already hired theirs. We would be hiring ours July 1. That's what's in the budget, right? Yeah. Chief Kessler's retirement is now scheduled for December. And so now the hiring of a, 
a chief becomes the priority more than the hiring of a deputy, right? Because yeah. let's face it, right? The future chief's staffing needs or wants might be different than what the current chiefs are. And so Chief Kessler and I were actually going to put um, a discussion on tonight, but we're going to save it to the next meeting because we actually, last meeting I had spoken about um, doing a recruitment in November and that timeline made him very nervous. And so we're going to be coming back proposing that we start that recruitment right now for the chief um, and potentially start with an internal assessment, much like we do with the police department with an outside firm in order to see if we have any candidates currently within our ranks in order to consider and if not that means that we are going to be i mean this is a strange way to say it but we're going to be paying substantially more for a new chief which means we're it's an article we have to address in november right so we want to know those things sooner than later and so in terms of the numbers really what's in there right now that's budgeted um is the chief for six months to december right and then $130,000 for the second half of the year, so half of that for the new chief, plus six months of the deputy for the first six months. That's what's in there. The deputy drops back to part-time in January. That's where, mm -hmm. so it's part-time now would we'll drop back down. That's okay. how it's, that's currently what's in there. Um, and then in terms of funding, just as a reminder, we still are in an agreement with Blackstone for shared chief services. We still will receive both um, $65,000, $60,000 from the grant that I wrote, the Regionalization and Efficiency Grant to cover the cost of the deputy. And then we will also still receive a half, I'm anticipating half of the funding agreement, which was 75,000, so half of that. Um, for the first six months. So that will offset the cost of basically making this transition. Um, the chief does have accruals, obviously. He's been here for five years. Um, those accruals are in benefits. That's typically where we um, allot for room within our reserve in order to handle any long-term employees who have cash outs at the end. So just a comment, that's what the current budget can cover. Right. Yes. Yes. It's not clear to me we really had a discussion on what the future of the fire department looks like officially. We, what right. I hear is proposals. We never actually had a discussion yet. Right. What if we want a chief and a deputy full time? Right. We and I think, right. And I think Chief Kessler wants to come in and have that conversation with you about mm -hmm. timeline. And that's what we were going to do it tonight. But there's actually something else pending first that he needs to know before he's ready to have that conversation. And so I would anticipate having that on a very agenda very soon. We have already got estimates uh, for different stages of recruitment internally and externally from MRI in order to move forward. So could the proposal from Chief Kessler change what FY24's budget? would be, or are we talking about the longer term post FY24 budget? No, his, the only way that he would change the budget at this point, um, I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna say no <laughs> to that, because even if it did change it and we needed additional funding for the second half of the year, January to June for whatever change that is, let's say it was making the deputy full-time, that we would address in November when we knew. Well, Right. So, I mean, I want to be clear is the current budget as it stands is not going to change between now and town meeting. Right. But as we discuss staffing, we potentially need to get more or less funding at a future town meeting. Kim, is that fair? Absolutely. Yes, yeah. exactly. Right now, what's in there is enough to cover a model that is chief for six months, deputy full time for six months, then a half time deputy for the second half of the year and a new chief the second half of the year. Right. Yeah. No. Nope. No more Blackstone agreement. I know it's got a lot of moving parts, but that's that's the number. So we're happy with the current proposal until a new one, which could be uh, more expensive, is is proposed and aligned as the desired path forward. Of which, at that point, in the next town meeting, we handle whatever that impact is. Right. Is it is it fair to say, Kim, that that what this essentially does is is speed up the timeline for the chief's plan about his transition? So um, I think part of the concern from our last meeting was um, waiting too long and not getting clear direction about 
how and when and how much for a chief legitimately, right? There's always a question around recruiting what type of candidate we'd be able to attract, right? And so the sooner we have those answers, we can start sort of eliminating some of these unknowns, which what is a realistic salary range for a new chief? What is the likely qualification level of a new chief? So the sooner we have that data, the better. Um, I was saying November because typically that's about when we would consider it, right? Because I wanted to include him in the process, right? We want his knowledge and his wisdom as part of our guidance on this. And it's, but in actuality, you know, why would we spend now recruiting for a deputy to then just basically start recruiting three months again for a chief? Let's just do the chief now. And then, you know, which really is the bigger issue we have to solve. So yes, I mean, we would be recruiting for something. It's just going to change from deputy to uh, to chief sooner. Any other questions about that? And the chief will no longer be shared at Blackstone. This chief will after, be so amended. After just no, the after January, unless some That'd new be, agreement right. was forged. Right. Okay. Right, because the current agreement is for the current chief, the current chief retires, and that agreement ends. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. I'm clear. I have no more questions. Anybody else on FinCom? Go ahead and FinCom online. No questions for me. Two G's. None for me. Yeah, none here. Thank you. Move to approve the FY24 budget as presented. Second. I'm almost afraid to ask this. Any other discussion? From the select board, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So now we have to vote and approve or um, well, approve or disapprove. Well, not, not a, what, what needs to happen is um, at the town meeting, you're going to have to make a recommendation, right? Correct. So the issue is that um, if you're ready to do that now and vote to recommend this, then you can report on that recommendation. But there's still a budget hearing that has to happen where and typically. You would you, you would uh, do the budget hearing and then vote at the hearing um, to whether you're going to recommend this and all the other articles as well, yep. because you have to make recommendations on all the articles at what town I, meeting. What I don't want to do is hold up the FinCom book from being published. So the what I talked with Kim was mm -hmm. we would come here tonight and vote tonight. That way the book can be published. And mm -hmm. then the week of the 24th, we would do a hearing and uh, the warrant article review, and then we'd be done. Sounds like a plan. So, so then uh, I move to approve the uh, FY24 budget. Get a second. second. Oh, all those in favor? Aye. Sientra, aye. Hodgins, aye. Zamuno, aye. aye. Yep. Pendelier, aye. Gregor, aye. You guys have it. Right. Great. Awesome. <laughs> now the budget is down. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank yeah. you for I just wanted to say, work on that. Kim, I, Kim, I think I think you did a great job. I know you you, you did a lot of the behind the scenes work with the school system, the school system, and everything else. And uh, this was not an easy year to navigate all of this, and it was a great job. Well, the trick, the next tricky part is going to be figuring out how what it prints out to look like now in the new book. That's why you need more time, right? Like. <laughs> That's going to be everything is just a little bit different than the previous years, right? Right. All right, let's um, just going to take it out of order. If you look at number nine, discuss regional RFPs for professional services. Why don't we talk about that before we get into the ATM uh, warrant? OK, so typically every year, um, multiple times a year, CMRPC, Central Mass Regional Planning Commission, sends all the communities within their purview um, surveys that say, 
which or, or any of these services would you be interested in regionalizing or sharing with or being a part of a group on? And you check off any number of things you could be interested in. Um, it's relevant right now because um, there are two RFPs that we are potentially in a group, regional group with that are going out. One is for accounting and the other one is for IT. And so the timeline should be that um, both should be returned before the end of this fiscal year. Those agreements are usually for three years at a time. Um, and you don't, you're not guaranteed, you're not forced to opt in once it comes back, right? It just goes much like when we buy fuel sometimes, you know, we, we send out as a group and then they come back with a number and we prefer not to do that. We can go in a different direction. But what these things do is they provide greater stability, obviously, for the independent professional service groups, but also they provide access for me to be able to apply for more regionalization and efficiency grants to help pay for these services. And so to the extent that we can continue to we've been very successful at getting a lot of funding through these mechanisms. And so. Um, Mike had just asked that I talk about them being out there. This is something that we do fairly regularly for anything that they're recruiting for at that time. We jump onto almost everything that's out there. So, but right now the ones that are out are um, IT and accounting. All right. Anybody have any questions about that? I just and I brought this up because I I received a call from our uh, from the firm that does our. The, the, for the town accountant. And um, initially he thought that his contract was expiring at the end of March. And uh, I reached out to Kim and she says, no, I don't think so. I think it's the end of June. And then uh, it turns out she was right. So it wasn't an issue. So, but I said, well, you know, since we have new members of the board, never been through this before, it'd be a good opportunity to just talk about it. And, you know, requesting RFPs is always a good idea. So, all right, let's, um, let's go back to uh, to go through the ATM warrant. I know that two weeks ago you all reviewed it. The first shot and we still got is it 30, 39 on the on this draft. So Kim, do you want to walk us through this? Or do we just need to walk through the ones that uh, there's still a question about? She go away or? No, she's good. Okay. Sorry. Kim, you're on mute. Sorry. So I was saying, I'm hoping that you will walk through them so that I can focus on the financial components so that I can start putting that data into the spreadsheet. Um, so that FinCom can take the next step that they need to in order to move forward. I mean, I can answer questions related to any of them, but I, I think anyone can speak to their articles. That would be helpful. All right. So the first, so the first four articles um, are always things can't be taken out of order. Um, it's compensation for elected officials, um, bills of a, of a prior year, which has to be a nine tenths vote, um, and then we have the budget, which is uh, which is Article Four, right? So those are all standard. Um, Article five is chapter 90 money, which again is something we, we can we do that one on consent calendar? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. So that's just, so again, chapter 90 money is, um, money the state gives for us for the highways. Um, Article six, this, uh, cyclical. Sickle assesses um, inspection program is something we have on every year. It's usually um, it's on a three year cycle and it's a third of the cost. So that's again, that's a pretty standard one. Um, same thing with Article 7. Um, Article 8 matching grants for, for police. Um, same thing with Article 9 with with this 7500 from from opioid. Um, I guess the first one in Article 10 has to do with the uh, Community Preservation Act. Um, and this is to pay that part of the police station debt exclusion. Is, is that correct? We have yes. a red number. Yes. Yeah, so, that, so again, that's something that's not exactly contractual, but you know, it's it's something predetermined. Um, five year land use program again is something we do every year. Um, mm -hmm.
the lease agreement. Is this is this a new one, Kim? Article 12. So 12 is a new lease agreement proposal that the fire chief is putting forward because ambulances are two or more years out. So he would like to have an article on here for up to seven years, potentially. I don't know that I would put a dollar amount in this, um, but certainly a cap on the time table. Okay, so he's going to come speak to us in a couple of weeks. I yeah, I mean, that's basically in a nutshell, that's the entirety of it, which is ambulances are two years out for delivery. So we need to get authorization if we're going to do a lease for one um, at some point between now and then to help expedite the process. Um, he's I mean, that 425 obviously comes from an analysis he did based upon cost. I'm just saying from a process standpoint, I don't know that I would print that in the warrant going out in case it needs to change on the floor. OK, Article 13 has to do with the the uh, we're going back to this track list now because of the length of the lease. Needs to be yes, to so, meeting, right? Yes, just as a reminder, I'll just do it very quickly. We entered into a lease agreement, uh, municipal leases, typically three years are fine, but this one happens to be eight. So we need town meeting authorization or to do it. We also need an article in order to transfer money from somewhere to pay, make the payments for this. And you will need to do that at some town meeting every year going forward until it's paid. All right. Article 14 is for um, the cost of design work for the senior center expansion. So we left this on as a placeholder and I, I started working on the spreadsheet yesterday and today. It's confusing with the new system to find the real balances, but um, it looks to me that we have about um, $66,000 potentially available still from free cash. Uh, I'm going to propose that you put that aside for the water infiltration system and hold off on the senior center expansion study until the fall um, or use a different source of funding for this. Um, I don't I don't know that we have even having a dollar amount for this engineering work. I'm, I'm obviously totally in favor of this project and keeping it moving forward. And I definitely would like to have some number that we bring forward before the next annual town meeting with potentially maybe even a ban, a bond anticipation note related to the project. Um, but I'm not sure where the funding you you'd have to decide if you're willing to use stabilization or some you know, stabilization basically in order to move this forward or leave it on and let the town decide. Right now, what do we have in stabilization? What's the latest figure? So I was checking today. The balance should be um, one million one hundred and fifteen thousand six hundred and ninety-seven. Um, couldn't find it in the new system yet. There's all new numbers, but that is the la that was the last number at the end of our last meeting. So that was the last balance. Um, I can't tell you where that puts us on target because we haven't got there yet. So I'll you'll have that data obviously when it goes to FinCom, FinCom for a, a source recommendation later this month. There's about um, eighty nine hundred dollars that. Um, Amy. Right. Amy identified. Yeah, that, that Amy identified is available from other projects that could be transferred to into this uh, to uh, help offset the request is 50, right? At this 50, point, I think if you look at it, we'll probably get away with something less than around 40. We had one quote that came in $10,000 to do the build study for the building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we have the two other outstanding elements would be the sewer and also the well. Uh, those are the engineering being like that. Yep. The well it needs to be repositioned, reconfigured. The storage has to take into account that the capacity is increased. Yep. And it's a combined sewer facility for not only the senior center, but I believe a few other buildings around. So but I think we can fit based on the capacity numbers So that's just the so that that the so the senior center leaches into the EPW. It's EPW. all part of that whole yeah. system. Mm -hmm. right? So so they just need to see if the capacity for the increase will, will be able to deal with that leaching. Talking to Joel earlier, I think we'll be all right if we're around 250 capacity people maximum. 
So with the, just, I, and which is which is great. I, I don't mean to cut you off. I just trying to get that. So the number is more forty. So with eighty nine hundred, you know, we're looking at you know, thirty one thousand dollars. Thirty one, thirty two. Speaking of potentially, we find another thousand within, you know, ten thousand to cover yeah. the study for the building. But we need help on the sewage, on the well, which would be another forty. Sorry, thirty. Sorry. 30. We have um, money that um, we had left over from the furnace and windows and uh, the architectural study. And so Amy uh, advised us when we met that we could use, if we could get that money transferred, we used for now. That's at 89. Because we returned that money. We, we're very fiscally responsible and monies we don't use, they get returned every year. Even our budget this year, we didn't but, ask. But, but hold on. Well, that, okay. hold on. Did, did that money already get returned, or it's sitting in an no, account? No. So that so we'd have to take it. The look at it's. It's possible that we wouldn't have to transfer it at all, based upon whatever the wording was in the in the motion, right? It might say our act or any relation there too for the senior center project. So it might be usable in the fund that it's in. If not, then we would have to put an article on in the fall to transfer it from wherever to wherever. I mean that doesn't stop you from anticipating having it now that would just basically be like a housekeeping item right i think the question kim now is uh so they could get started on that first piece which is ten thousand. can they transfer that ten? if if we know by the town well i'm sure we could know by the town meeting that if we needed to transfer that money for that where well, they could at least start with the ten thousand so, look for the 30 I, in the fall i would i would say this it's it's complicated because we FinCom has to be able to analyze what's available in order to make a recommendation on funding source. And we don't have that data at this point. What we really need to determine is whether or not we're in support of leaving an article on to see if there is a funding source potentially available, to which I would say yes, right? I mean, to me, the biggest variable that we're going to talk about is this water infiltration system in the time frame for that. And, you know, I've been saying free cash, but in reality, maybe that's a stabilization vote, right? Because the number might be $150,000, right? Well, uh, those numbers will come in and the time frame might be well before STM, right? So that's, I think you leave it. We sort that out in the next couple of weeks. We come back with potential proposals for where funding could come from. And if it's not possible, then no. And then if the town's willing to t use stabilization and FinCom supports that, then we can vote on that too, right? Isn't it also possible that some of the unused ARPA funds could be used for this because we talked about the water study. So uh, not so we haven't used any ARPA funds yet. Right. Um, so they're we used for the well, the water. So we we definitely don't have enough funding in order to consider anything for the water and the filtration system. Um, that's beyond the scope of anything that we've dealt with before. We did get earmarks for well stuff and for engineering related to it, but that's already absorbed. And then the rest of the costs related to the campus, I mean, we're running a very tight margin there. So much, we this much, is certainly beyond. So we, we have free cash, we've got stabilization. Now I'm hearing we have unspent ARPA funds. What's the balance of that account? So ARPA is the money that we put aside. We haven't touched it at all. Um, has to be spent by December 2024 that we were putting aside for water and sewer right, projects, right? Basically using as our match related to whatever we were doing that came back from the water and sewer study. And so when the other last meeting we talked about, we had $200,000 worth of um, grants coming in. We might need another 50 to order, make sure that we could get the numbers we needed to make data. That other 50 would be a vote that the select board would take at a different time from ARPA to use for that. Now, sure. you can use ARPA for any number of things, um, certainly based upon just revenue loss during the pandemic, but we haven't actually gone near it because we right. had basically pocketed it for water yes. and sewer. I was thinking about the DLS dashboard and I asked what un UUFB funds, unfunded, mm -hmm. undesignated funds are, and I figure they have like one and a half million in, does that sound right for ARPA? Menden I think it's like, the yeah, it is. Plus, it, I, I know what we have in the bank, in 
in the system today is like nine hundred and thirty six thousand right. dollars. And so I was um, I sent an email out checking to see if that's half or if it's just some sort of we're accounting from one is in twenty two and one is in twenty three. So um, I don't I have a whole spreadsheet on ARPA and the uses and the funding that we can right. discuss when we're ready to spend it. And and part of that, too, was was the the county government piece that was going to us because we don't have county government in Massachusetts. Right. Does that 1.5 include that county piece? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm just trying to understand what our fund balances are that are eligible for spending. Sounds like we have free cash, ARPA, and stabilization. Stabilization right. and then CapEx. Yeah. yeah which, okay. Right. Which is, that's, that's the smallest that's number, right? Drain. Well, well so holding a piece. Assuming that my data is correct at this moment, free cash is 66K, stabilization is 1.1 million, and uh, CapEx is 195. Yeah. So that, I mean, without having sorted through the new <laughs> system, um, that's what they should be. Right. Now, so, so right. the, the, so we, the we are anticipating $900,000, a high number, of free cash in the fall, just as a reminder, because we uh, had delayed payments not recognized in the right fiscal year. And so we are off about 300 K in free cash to begin with. So just keep that in mind too, like in the back so, of your mind. So if the, the engineering for the service center expansion is say approximately 50 K, the question I'd throw out to this board is, do we want to find 50 K somewhere out of those four sources of funding to leave the Warren article on? Right. Well, I think at this point we're, we need to leave it on, right? But because until we find that, yeah, we find. But right. but our intent would be to find it. Correct. Fair? I would agree. Yeah, okay. I would agree. All right. I think. And again, ten thousand of that, I think we could come out of existing funds. I'm not sure of the county aspect, Kim, of how you need to do the more transfer. Or just transfer. I would I would let that go to free cash. Find the full right. amount. Well, I, th I, th I think the problem it, is it won't. It won't go to free cash. They just they they're sitting moved. in those. They're just unspent oh, money oh, in those special oh, articles. Kind of, kind of like yeah, the library. special article, so it doesn't dollars. Right, it doesn't go down back. to free cash. Yeah. It just stays there. That's fine. Right. Yeah. Right. So we're, we're those cleaning up those articles to get rid of. spend those out. Yeah. Get rid of those. Well, I guess you're right. And I think we probably for, for fortunately you're probably coming at about forty thousand. We've got ten. It's going to be thirty thousand asked. The other sure. thing is there's a lot of work being done for the uh, housing development, affordable mm -hmm. housing. And the adjacent property. Mm -hmm. We've done some survey work for Wells. We've done some survey with Joel and company. Yeah. Those are engineering companies that know the property well. We could leverage them probably at a attractive cost. And I've also started to work with uh, state representatives looking at creative ways to come in with when we get beyond this phase, mm -hmm. start looking at getting funding for uh, energy sources that are reusable, put into the new configuration. They can get, they don't have money for senior centers, hmm. right? But they do have money for energy efficiency. They do have money for uh, handicap access, elevator. And when I talked to Fatman staff, they're coming back to us mm -hmm. with a list of other possibilities that aren't senior centers where they could contribute to the larger bills down the road because we got to build this thing eventually. Yeah. But for now, we need to get it off the ground. I think if we show their good faith to invest to get the engineering studies, thinking about water efficiencies and those elements that Fatman's organization is going to come back with, that would position us to get more money from the state so that its overall impact of this thing is done is less than now. Okay, can yeah, I just I jump in here for a minute? I feel ahead. obligated to say this, which is, I mean, they're probably not completely in the loop on this, but part of the issue right now is this pending water and sewer study that we're doing, right? right. And the possible location of future aquifers in sewer, which happen to be very close to the senior center. And so I think whatever plans that we're considering and you know these earmarks and the things that our representatives are looking for for us are related to water and sewer that we're currently pursuing right so which could be part of whatever future discussion there is that's around the senior center so i think timing wise i understand the value of the creation of doing this and looking at the wells and doing all of this but i mean you have to be putting in the back of your mind the possibility that this might be on water so sooner than later, right? 
So that's all of this, and that can change the capacity of even what they build over there. So sure. just sure. keeping it all in, in mind. That's a great point. And what we really have to do sooner than later is get all these things into a single spot so we understand where the redundancies are. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You know, because I mean, I think it's a great point Kim makes, but I also think that verbally, we just heard there's a possible leverage point that we need to kind of somehow document so we can start to bring all these different priorities into a single discussion around what we're going to do from a town infrastructure. Well, it is a, but again, it, it's it's a process that's actually with the previous board, Wandi and I have been we've been talking about this and all of these things to get them to come together. Well, um, I think that's part of our. I mean, given the DLS study and our discussion about multi-year budgeting and big idea, uh -huh. big tickets, capital, this all comes. This is the time to actually. I agree. Put pen to paper. So. Right. Right. You have to start looking. I mean, at the long-term goals related to these investments that we might be making, so that we aren't being short-sighted. You know that we can really consider the possibilities of actually investing in a 50 million dollar water expansion right seems outrageous but the return could really be beneficial and so we have to be thinking of this as we're taking our next steps and i mean unfortunately the senior center is located right there right so is the new housing unit so i i would just say if they're going to be looking for earmarks or ways to leverage make sure it's not specific to engineering related to infrastructure Get it for a senior center or ADA accessibility or anything else, right? Programming or mixed use or meeting facilities, anything, right? Just What's keeping that in mind. But the flip side of the positive might be that we might be able to use ARPA funds related to whatever we put into the ground related to their project, right? So. As I talk to Batman staff and his people, and we'll do the same thing with Brian. Uh, and we'll go beyond that. That's right. It's all on each side question, too. We can get this to the next level. Get an article passed, get us moving so we have some tangible plans and designs for short term, not for the full. Mm -hmm. Then we can, I'd ask you to set up a committee to get this rolling under the guidance of the select board. We participate as yep. users and not drivers, and the sure. select board can integrate it into a more strategic plan. Because I can't. We can't stay, keep up with what Kim's saying. But clearly, if we want to get this done effectively, we need to outreach to people beyond our town. Sure. And until that gets that visibility, including at the town, with an article saying we're going this way, because somewhere along the line, we're going to need to either wait till something sunsets to build this thing, find a bucket of money, or go back to the people for a reason that's got money. All right. And, and I think that. Just as we said, this this uh, we're going to leave this article yeah. on. We're going to find we're going to see if we can find that that, that we got the ten. We'll find the thirty, and see if we can get this. Right. So no, so fifteen will stay there. So let, let's go to sixteen. Talks. What, what is fifteen? What are we appropriate? Uh, I'm sorry. Fourteen. Uh, fourteen. Uh, no, fourteen. 14. Yeah, 14. 14. Okay. I'm going to fifteen, which is um, for town hall improvements. Kim, is this is this the uh, the alcove and the wi windows, is that what this is for the RFP or is this something different? Right, so this was a, a catch-all article for a couple of different projects okay. related to the town hall that were all being discussed at the same time. Um, I, I, much like I said earlier, I'm still very hopeful that we would be able to have a final number of cash potentially available from the campus left to allocate towards the next, to me, the alcove and the windows are separate, right? And for the alcove piece, I certainly want to know where, if we have any funding available before we pursue anything related to that going forward, because there's a huge ADA compliance piece related to that. The windows are actually separate. Um, we just happen to be joined by trying to use the same contractor. Um, my only update on that, and I'll be sending you guys an email later related to this is that I just heard back just Monday from that person with some designs related to the stairs in the back. I mean, that's the pace in which this moves. So I personally am not comfortable. I, I'm not putting forward any requests for any money at this time related to the alcove because I don't feel certain, you know, we're running. I really want to finish up the campus project first 
and there, even if there's twenty thousand dollars available and there are thirty thousand, I want to know before we come back and ask for more money related to the town hall. And so, so we taking that's my sixteen preference. off. Well, no, because the 15. windows may the windows may need money on their own, and that's separate from this. Okay, I, I just want to be really clear because I thought we, to your point, we consolidated the windows with the alcove under a single architecture design, right? Is that what you said? Yeah. So have we heard anything from the architect on the cost of the windows and the approach on the windows? When no, you say they're separate, I'm assuming they're separate funding sources, but it's a single project or no? So we have brought, the, they were separate projects that we brought together under the one architect, and right. he is working on both, right? We had separate previous town meeting votes related to each project funding portions for the study each way. So there still is funding there available to pay this person to do this next phasing, right? right so right. Um, he is working on both. I have not seen any additional detail yeah. financially or otherwise related to it. Um, yeah. I am setting up a call hopefully for next week in order to see what the next step is. Right. Um, and Kim, just to confirm, you the architect is going to get back to you with any information. He's just not done yet. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, they're, it's they're still they're still commingled. I just don't know. Um, I think the windows is more straightforward, so they may have a number in mind already that they want to ask for to put aside from CPC related to the windows. I don't know that piece. So it, um, that you know to keep that that piece going. I don't know, but my is, in terms of my who, piece of the alcove, the I don't I don't need anything. Who is the they that wants to put aside? When you say they w might have a number they want to put aside, who is they? So historic. So I think that's Lynn and Kathy and Dan, right? I think yeah, I they, feel like they the don't have was a number. Up. Okay. They, and I think they were waiting on this architect to get back to them on okay. the window. So probably not going to put any money. There might be a different windows article on here that we might not go forward with. Right. Like. So I, I certainly don't want to delay the windows project though, because of the alcove project, because based upon just timeline in general, I think that's going to be a very complicated time consuming long project with a lot of phases. And if anything related to the previous couple of projects we've worked on has taught me anything, it's going to take two to three times as long as I think it's going to take. And so um, I think I don't want the alcove piece holding up the windows piece if that's more straightforward. I, I would say this, this may be under old business, go back to town hall, because I think now what I'm hearing is we want to split the projects potentially, no, even though we can set. It's not, a, it's not old business because we've got the alcove and the windows have always been something in the future, just they were going to be okay, done at so the same think, time. In, right. I'm thinking about the process of, yeah. of overall management now. It sounds like we have some a decision point. Do we separate, keep them together, wait for the architect to go forward? But without without getting mission creep here, okay. uh, as far as the article 15 on here, what I'm hearing you say, Kim, is that you you're not you don't need any money from that right now. So we're just going to strike 15. No, I. I would say you need to verify with historic before you remove it, whether or not they are looking to allocate a certain amount of funds related to the windows. I don't want to uh, hold up their project because I don't need up. funding. OK, at this so moment. 15 is so 15 is about windows, historic and CPC, and it's not about the alcohol. Lynn has her hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, Lynn. That's OK. Um, yeah, I just wanted to come in on that. Um, I think there is confusion on this particular issue because we have been waiting for windows because we did think that uh, I'm speaking for, you know, the commission. Um, we had thought that the windows were going to be part of um, that's that that project. And when we had spoken with, um, you know, the art, the the designer, the design contractor before, that was all going to be inclusive. We didn't, I didn't know anything about that we were going to be separating it. So we, um, Historic is not putting in any amount of money at this time for Windows because we have no clue whatsoever that would be. And we've not really even discussed it. We were just waiting to hear back from, um, I think his name's Ryan at the design. But uh, but I'm thinking, I'm, 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 go ahead, Lonnie, you have a Sorry, so But 15, we can leave it. If there's no number in the in the wording, if there's no number by the time we get to town meeting, pass yeah, over. over it. Right. right. Uh, uh, honestly, no... though, it, to Lynn's point, if she knows that they don't need funding, I would like to remove this article because I, oh. I don't want mission fatigue related to the town hall. 
Well, the campus, okay, so, right? So they I would rather them? pull it so that because I mean, my reaction would be people saying, didn't we just vote on this last meeting? Right. Let's so the, take a break then. So the issue. So the issue of 15 is the, the money for the windows would be CPC money, which we have. So the only right. issue would be, are we going to know what a number is by town meeting? Because if we don't, we may as well pull it and just deal with it in the fall. Right. So and will we, we know? But will we know by in a month? We don't know. So that's the, like I'm saying. I just heard from the 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 architect Monday to set up a meeting to look at designs related to the stairs. That's the entirety of the email that I received. <laughs> so I had offered to meet yesterday and today, and he said next week. And so that's where okay. I'm at. Okay. I mean, so besides that, I don't have any information. Then, then we're not going to have it within a month. So I'm just going to suggest we pull 15. Then I agree. Yeah. All right. Great. All right. 16 is the water filtration system. Um, right. Are we going to, are we going to actually, I mean, we, we have to leave this one on here because we have. Yeah. To so the here's water. the issue with the water filtration system. This is a must do, right? right. The problem right. is we don't know how much, right? And the, the main concern of that to me is the time frame in which we're going to need this funding, right? And so I don't, if we were going to, um, you know, take a chance about putting some money aside specifically related to something, it would be for this because it's it's happening right now with the campus, which is, you know, either this, we get a number and we get a system and McClure can guarantee that it can get installed at a time while the contract of UEL is out here, or we're going to have to come back and do it later and they're going to have to redo some of the work and we're going to have to pay additional. There's, there's a lot of moving parts to this. So my recommendation would be to put at least $50,000 aside for this water filtration system. And I would anticipate it's going to be double that. Um, at least it could get us started. I think I told you at a previous meeting, I've already asked for an earmark related to this system as well. Um, and hopefully we get it. Um, but right now we don't have a number. And so I, I we need something. That's I, for sure. I'd, Kim, I'd want to aim high on this one and return yeah, the know. money if you don't spend it. I, I'd yeah. say a hundred thousand because yeah. we can't even wash our hands in the town hall right now, so right. it's kind of weird. Yeah. So I, I would, and I think this is probably a better use of stabilization. That's what I was thinking when we were talking before about the senior center. Like this is a legit savings sort of issue, and the senior center might be more of a free cash issue, right? Um, which is why we can sort that out once we have numbers. But yeah, hopefully we'll have a number, but I'm sure it's going to be high. It's gonna be capital when, too, right? When yeah, when will we hear about the uh, earmarks? Like when are we likely to hear? Not within time. <laughs> so typically, <laughs> you know, well, after what? the budget has already been passed. Like so or yeah, I'm think I'm feeling like it's usually June time frame when we hear something. And it's but no you, guarantee but, on amount. So even if you ask for a hundred, could be twenty, could be nothing, right? It's basically, you know, that we just submitted the emails what uh within the last 30 days request with requests but for the purposes of of tonight we're gonna 16 to stay on there and we're thinking we're just doing a ball park of 100k from stabilization but in, or cap yeah yeah or cap right and, 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 well cap does the two thirds right right yeah, yeah. Well, regardless of where it comes from we can always put it back right right all right, right. seven all right 17 is is the water enterprise fund that's going to stay 18 of the of the the various revolving funds um, 19 um, is to increase ZBA from three to five, th from three to five. So that's not There's a money. Slight change, slight change, just so you know, it's going to be it's going to be five members, but you still need two alternates. So it'll be a seven member board. Five okay. Members. All right. So, but I the Karis is working all that out because there was all legal. Okay. With that, 20 the planning board put on. So that's outside our purview, right? Because that they they want this one on there. Yeah, that's yeah. that new bylaw that they put together. Okay. Yeah, I'm working with Jack on the the actual language on that one. Of the okay. of the bylaw change. Article 21's land use committee. Article 22's land use committee. 23, 24, 25 is uh, EPA. 26, 27, 28 are all CPA. Is there anybody on historic to talk about 29? This is about this has to do with the records room, right? Yeah. And the money for the records room. Yep. I'm here. Hi, um, Lynn. hi again. again. Um, yes, we had a meeting. CPA had a meeting last night 
Um, so we have, um, we actually put uh, the figure in there of, um, we wanted to vote to transfer 176,250 from CPA Historic to be used as a matching funds for the um, Preservation Project Fund Grant for the Records Room. Um, we were set to vote on it last night. However, there is another issue that's come up um, that actually uh, my Commander Leah uh, had spoken to. I'm, I'm, I'm not a builder. <laughs> I'm not a civil engineer. So when these things come up, I, I'm really not 100%. I have to go and seek more guidance on it. We actually have um, a call out to the design company who is helping us put together the RFP and all the information for the grant for this, this matching grant. Um, and we are hopeful to have a meeting with them within the next few days to a week to to get the answers to Mike's questions on uh, water actually containing water around this building. Once we have that, we will be able to come back and either confirm this figure or it may actually have to increase. We're not sure. So we did not take a vote on that last night at CPA, but we will hopefully have all of that information ready for the next CPA meeting and be able to vote on it then. Did that okay, make so that sense? Was, that was 28, right? The records room? 29. Yes. Yes. Oh, no, wait, sorry. No, no there's two, two, two of them, 13. Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah. Oh. 20 and then and then so 28 is the CPA money, 29 is the historic piece of it. So they're both yes. together. Yeah. Okay. And then 30 has to do with the affordable housing project at 52 Providence Street. Anything to do with the water have any effect on that at this point? Um, I'm, Kim, I'm sorry, you, know? you asking me on that one? I'm sorry, no, I, I'm sorry, I moved on. Okay. I, I understand know. that right. I understand that 28 and 29 have to do with CPA and historic to do with the records room. So that's obviously staying on there. And I see the 176 250 number. I'm just now I've moved on to, to 30, which is asking about uh, community preservation accounts for affordable housing. And uh, that's for that piece behind the senior center. Yeah, right. So I don't think I know, but that's also a part of that aquifer area. But uh, so we're still leaving that on there. I have a quick question. Sure. Uh, what, what is the difference between CPA and CPC in the um, it, it they're interchangeable, I guess. Okay, so they're I mean because they, they're sort of alternating. Yeah, I know. Okay, but okay. CPA, uh, it's Community Pre Pre Preservation, Preservation Act, Act, and then the Community, Community Preservation right. Committee. Right. Okay. Right. It changes for for our purposes here. Okay. And Article Thirty One is the potential about. Um, the paddock property we talked about. 32, again, CPC. For the conservation restriction for the conservation paddock. restriction for paddock. I think 33 can be removed when I look at that. And I, I'd say Lynn and Mike, we were both, we talked about the gutters for the records room. I think that's now incorporated into the 176 plan. Yes, that's correct. Oh, oh so so twelve hundred is putting it back. So yeah, it's putting, putting it back. back. Yep. Okay, so thirty three is gone. Spend that money. No, it stays. It stays. 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 Yeah, stays. we're putting the money back. Sorry. So how much money, money do we have going into this in CPC, CPA, whatever CP fund, <laughs> uh, going in and coming out? Of I don't think we know yet. But they'll, they'll know, you'll especially for the one for. Uh, yeah, we're going to know by the 24th. The, I mean, <laughs> the, the records room would be a minimum that what you see on that article right now, the 176 is minimum that would be required potentially on the, the redesign. Might right. Bump yeah, that I'm, just, I'm seeing a whole lot of spending here, and I don't know what our current balance is in regards to. All right, so you want balances. For the yeah, I mean, like there's 600 grand here. There's 176 grand. We got 990 right now. <laughs> Right. Um, so typically when we do the spreadsheet, it has those balances in it. This is also the meeting in which we allocate, right? Or money get CPC is tricky because they have different times when the, the money gets dispersed. 
right? So it's coming in and going out at the same time very quickly. And so um, to get the best possible number, you want to get the number closest to the date of the actual meeting. And so we'll have that when you are recommending funding sources. OK, well, as long as we've got it set up for the week of the 24th, uh, it will most likely be that Tuesday. We, we like to meet yeah. on Tuesdays, so. Um, it, I mean, the, the current balances cover all of this in that doesn't and then we're going to be putting more money in in the same meeting is what Kim's saying too. OK, so but I think um, I don't know Just if like you see those ins and outs. Yeah, so I don't know if we can ask Lork. We sent Ann Mazar an email just to ask her to get her current balances. No, the, I will get them. Okay. So I'm uh, Ann can do it too, but we don't need an extra. She's just going to email accounting, which I'm already working with to get the numbers, right? So that I'll have all of the balances. Normally I would already have them, but we're in a new system. And so they're not in the same places that would, they would normally be in, right? And then you could see exactly what's going in and what is coming out, right? So I'll, I usually provide those numbers anyway for the spreadsheet. So I, that will happen as soon as I have them. All right, moving on to 34. This is the uh, 50 Milford Street. So this is the the block that we're looking to to sell for the. Um, is that is that what I'm saying? Looking at Edgewood, or is this or is this a different? Did this has to get pulled? I thought. I, I'm I'm asking. I don't know. Is this the little piece inside of Sweets Land that they were talking about? This is a, a small por partial uh, that was taken in tax title and then was okay. incorrectly conveyed to a private property owner. And so this is trying to clean up the conveyance. OK, OK, so that's next to that's next to where that. Is being sold. <clears throat> so that's so that stays. Yes, please. OK. 35 historic bylaw. That has to stay, right? Yeah. 36 Parks Department for water testing. Yeah, this was that $5,000 for the water testing equipment, uh, which when we talked about it will uh, reduce the, the testing will be able to be done by the Parks Department. Uh, and then if need be, then we could call somebody else to retest if, if but it's going to allow for testing to be yep. faster and save us money that pays for itself. Fourth and, the, right. and 37 is for an AED. Yeah, the cabinets for the, cabinets. For the cabinets. OK. Did we decide we need we, do we still need the rock the block placeholder or is that did we already? The only th thing would be that um, if we it would be there to. put the money back that was uh, that was spent over so, over what sorry yeah. Yeah, sorry so i put this on here because i think that you should be putting it on like mm -hmm. your other standing special articles that you have as part of your budget that get voted on every year around inspection cycle like those those all of those articles up at the top are all ones that actually are in your operating budget they're just voted on separately and that's where i think right. this one belongs um I think it should be called rock the block yeah, so I mean, you can put it in community celebrations, account. you can yeah. call it whatever you want, but I think you need to start sort of a revolving account somewhere in concept, right? It, with a special article related to this so that they have the availability of funds and the ability to bring in funds so that you don't have to be deciding basically in May for September how much money you're going to have, right? So um, it's whichever mechanism you want to use, I just think you need to pick one and sort of dedicate a thing to it right not so much just one-time funds every five years just a regular place grow it if you put it in parks even it, better yeah i think at the, even at this point i think that we we raised well over 90 percent of the money i don't have the actual figures in front of me i can send them to everybody see you'll have them and then there was a little bit that got used out of that extra festival money that was left over from the 350th that we had transferred so even if you even if again if it's tight this year, even if we started with just what was used, maybe to get it back up to the I think there was 30,000 total that was left over in it. Uh, but again, most of the money was raised. So. 
And does it does it make sense more that, efficient right this year rather than call it rock the block to have, have like a, a festival, festival account yeah, festival whatever whatever because that way if we want to do because the Christmas parade with the fireworks and everything else yep. that's what yeah. I'm saying yeah I, I I think that's exactly right which is you should have somewhere so in a community in which you had a larger parks and recreation department you would have an account somewhere related to these types of activities that are basically about sense of place sort of community projects that you can go to for these types of things. And it doesn't have to be a lot of money because it's really a gesture about supporting these types of things. So even if it's $10,000 a year, it's still something, right? And that's sort of the point. So that doesn't feel like so, an afterthought and, and committees can stay involved because they know they have a funding source. So when we, when we go back to uh, Article 18, which has these revolving funds, could we just put it in as another revolving fund rather than calling it parks and planning, but could we just call festival? You have to go through a different process to create right. a revolving right. fund. No, I know That's that. That's just funding the ones you've already created. Right. Yeah, all would... I'm getting at is maybe it makes sense to have that put uh, eventually put into that. If, if we know we're going to do it every year and we're going to fund it, what is the process to create a revolving fund? It's um, it's just yeah. another, it's another another article. article, another article that says we're going to create this revolving fund with limits. So we could use this. Estimates. Thirty-eight should be. Yeah. It's just the creation of. The right. Right. That, that's my point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But but all I was saying is that eventually, so instead of, it would just become part of the revolving funds. Yeah. Right. Next fiscal year, that would just be added to that list. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So. All right. So that's, uh, thirty-eight, and then thirty-nine is the way we started with um not verizon wireless but verizon yeah. right or yeah. our um all right so any any other questions of, or concerns about the warrant well it's more the revolving account okay yeah revolving accounts usually funded by fees and things that are collected yes so but that it's in and out whereas this, is a, this should be more of a budget line item, maybe under town hall called festivals that we fund, so the, you know? Right, so the issue was that when we had the money coming in last year, what do we have to do, Kim? Oh, you're saying the donations. If the, yeah, so was, the was, donations uh, came into that account so we could, it, we could so that it wasn't me keeping a spreadsheet or somebody, right, with, right, you know, right. handling the money. It was, it was through the system. To me, it was the revolving nature. I didn't see it until you said it's the donation. Yeah, it's the it's donation revolving. money coming. Yep. That, that was really helpful for the whole thing. Sorry, Kim. Because that way it was revolving. It can stay there. That's what I was going to say. Right. We, need, right. we need a mechanism in order to be putting funding in and then have it going into a place, too. I mean, we did have a donations account, I believe, set up that we used. Yeah, right. We, we had we had to do something. Uh, I just don't remember. Well, we had we, we, we had the we had the 350. 350. Right, but we didn't use that money until the end. Like, well, it, we couldn't use right. it. Right. We couldn't use right. it because right. it wasn't We actually we did it, right? What we had to do is allocate $15,000 from Selectman Miscellaneous in order oh, to right. basically right. jumpstart right. the fund so they'd have funding and to get it. started. And then we had to transfer the money months yeah, later it. and then move it back. Like that's So we got to find a better process is my point. So we can leave this on here. If it ends up just being putting ten thousand dollars in for now, and we figure it out over the next couple months for this year, and then we have a, I mean, I think part of the issue right now, even starting a revolving account, is we don't know what the limits would be because we've only had this thing one time, right? No limit. <laughs> yeah. why would you well, then that? that's why we need some more data points. <laughs> well, we'll just we'll put it right in there that that World Bank pays any of the yeah, overage. Yeah, that's right. All, right. Look, I, I, yeah, I'm just funding. I mean, you can always change the limit. <laughs> you can always change the limit you, at a town meeting. If you, had, if you so put, a, put 40 a 40 or 50, number, right. and a 40 if you or 50, see that it's too much or not enough, you change it the following year. A 40 or $50,000 limit is is more than enough. I mean, I, well, as far as I can tell. I mean, yeah. again, we we didn't, it didn't, that was a lot. We did a lot, and we kind of maybe were a little extravagant with some of the stuff we did last time, and it's going to, we'll definitely be more efficient this time, and, and it still wasn't an absurd amount of money. Yeah. Well, Why? because it, cause it's you, you just don't know until you do it for a while. You, yeah, you know, we're creating an account. Uh, I like putting some money into it. <laughs> the, your cap seems pretty reasonable. <laughs> do it. Yeah, sounds good. All right. So, All right. So, so what, would this article create that account then? Yeah, that's what, what I was wondering. What? Yeah, as long as we get the word. Yeah. Well, we got a placeholder on here. To, right. Right. Okay. So, so this. But the placeholder so, is. 
I don't think we'll have that language. I mean, don't, I don't think at this point you'd have that language in time. You should probably aim for that either for next May and put some money aside right now, right? And then like we need some data points. That's what right. I'm saying, which is, um, you know, fund it in an article and then make a permanent funding going forward. It just needs to be a part of a discussion or add it as part of a budget somewhere. And but all of that is sort of after the fact right now. So, so. I guess the, the question is the money from the 350th. Where is that and how much is that? It's, it's we moved a, it. That was moved like okay. last town meeting. Yeah, so, right. So do we even need this article then this time or do we just use that money for this year and then just do this? Right. No, this I, article, think, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I mean, I think I, I'm not sure off the top of my head what the balance is in that account, but I I. I, I think if it's you have funding potentially available, you should put something aside to, just because it's in September. That's the time frame. That's what I, I worry about. Anything that's between May 5th and November. Right. So. We don't want to go back to selectman miscellaneous to find it. Let's Let me get the numbers together and I'll send them to everybody. That I, that, that, okay. And I, we, Kim and I, and I can figure out what's in there right now. And then I'll I'll just, we'll, I'll yeah. give you a rundown of what, how yeah. it was spent last year. And what so we don't have to open the warning in the chat. We're just going to keep this here and then we'll get the specific language. Yeah. Next, next meeting. Right. All right. Okay. okay. All right. And then yeah. article 39 again, like I said, is is the warrant language or the, or the uh, easement language that uh, Karis is working on for us. So can I have a, I guess, a motion to close the warrant? So moved. Second. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. I move to approve the 5523. Uh, eight. Move to close the FinCom. <laughs> Second. Move. Yes, sir. You, got you have any? Aye. 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 Jack. Do we have any old business to no old business to discuss? Yeah, I, I just, just want to add Google something or. before we move off a town meeting. So last town meeting, we were heavily promoting the master plan and the survey on the board and the screen. I think I know this is next month, but this is why I keep putting it in front of you. If we are going to be doing a bylaw review committee or a charter review committee, we have to start recruiting right away as a priority. And town meeting is the ideal time to be doing that and basically saying that these are goals that we're looking forward for this next year, right? For people to come forward. And as people are discussing bylaws that night, people are going to want to know what that means. And so I just want you to think about that in terms of what we're going to promote for, but it's a perfect opportunity to sort of get some recruits for these things who might be interested. I I think we have to decide what what are, what are those DLS recommendations are we going to pursue? Right, right. I mean, I, I most of them yes. Time frame not sure, but, right? You know, I think I think most of them yes, but time frame is the is the question. Yeah, yeah. Well, but, but we're definitely, we definitely need to schedule it, a meeting. Yeah, to, but I mean, bylaw review this. is separate with, even before DLS. And we had started talking about creating a committee related to doing bylaw review for like when Cindy was still here. So I think if that's something that we can get started on, the sooner the better, right? What I would I like to suggest things that sounds like it might have been the previous board that discussed bylaw review when Cindy was here. I'm not sure after we've had that discussion. Why don't we revisit things that we're in in flight from the previous board to make sure the current board's up to speed on them because I'm I'm all for it. I'm just mm -hmm. hearing about it. I'm like, huh? So maybe like next next meeting we can kind of have some outstanding items that are in flight that we can kind of all if we're, the three of us get up to speed on. If we're gonna do it, if we're gonna do it for the town meeting, it's gotta be the next meeting because there's only that one and then two days before. So yeah, we've got to discuss it. We've got to have have it on on the agenda for the next meeting. Yeah. I agree. I move to. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. All right, I'm going to try again. <laughs> I move to approve the 5523 ATM warrant as amended pending town council review and approval. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, let me read this. We can do a breakout room in the floor. Where is the. <laughs> All right, so let me see. Um, so yeah, we got to move. Yeah, you. Harris is not coming. Uh, actually, executive session is all here physically. Nobody's remote. 
Oh, Kim. 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 Ah. Kim. <laughs> Come on, Kim. So. I move to enter an executive session under purpose six pursuant to MGL 30A section 2183 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on bargaining position or the public body highway union town hall. Um, so I so move motion made and seconded. Roll call vote morale aye. Tenio aye. Brugos. Brugos aye. Got it aye. Thank you. Sorry, I'm just uh, double angry. <laughs> you just shut that door behind Absolutely. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Just give me a second. Coming back to adjourn.
Well, is that room out? I think we are. Uh, okay, we're back in the main room. Hold on. <clears throat> Uh, okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. Okay. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Second. Made and seconded. Um, let's just next next meeting is two weeks from tonight. Right. Okay. Yep. And is that I know I saw that you sent an email. Now we're I can go to Board of Health will be next week. I guess. Yep. Right. Calendar's even updated. Right. Right. Thank you. Oh yeah. So, sorry. I, sorry. I, I, said it I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, everybody. Thank you. All, All those right, favor adjourn. Right. All right. Thank you. Budget's done, warrants kind of done, yeah, mostly yeah. bench.